Hello friends, welcome to our channel Creating Essence. I'm Megan, thanks for stopping by. I have tried repeatedly to film some kind of catch up, some kind of where have we been. I'm just never pleased with how it comes out. Nothing in particular, it just ends up kind of rambly and I don't really like it. So, I'm getting some work done in the garden and in the kitchen today. So I thought I'd bring you along. One of my big goals was to make sure that I dehydrated plenty of herbs this year. The year before last, I was really good about getting herbs dehydrated to last for the next year. And this last year, I honestly took for granted how easy it was the year before. And I didn't get any done. We ended up having an early frost and I didn't get any herbs dried this last year. None. And I grew enormous amounts of it. So it was kind of adding insult to injury. I'm also picking off the little seed heads here as I come across them. Because picking them off just kind of tells the basil, nope, you're not going to seed yet. You're not done growing. Keep making food. And I'm saving them in this little container because the chickens love them. They seriously fight over the basil seed heads. We've posted sporadically here and there since about the second week of May, but really we haven't been on our regular schedule and done much since about April. There are a lot of reasons for that. If you saw my Wellness Wednesday in March, which I'll link in the info box below, you saw that it was not a typical Wellness Wednesday and I was struggling with um, anxiety and panic attacks. My support system is fantastic and I have worked through a lot of that. And it comes and goes in waves. If you struggle with anxiety or depression or have PTSD like I do, you know, you know that's just how it works. And that's what I've been doing. I've also been super drained because if you have autoimmune disease or know someone close to you who does, you probably know that the heat is super draining. So I've just not had the energy I've needed to do what I needed to do. And frankly, YouTube is for fun. YouTube is, I love doing it and it totally fills my cup to share our hearts with all of you. But it's one of those things that when I just have too much on my plate, YouTube takes a back seat. So that's what it's done. Ooh, look at this. Don't want to get too close because I don't want to scare it away. Ooh, ooh. There's a beautiful black swallowtail butterfly hanging out on the zinnia right now. So pretty. And it's gone. Well, the other thing I'm doing out here in the garden right now is harvesting some fresh herbs because I'm gonna make, I'm going to try to replicate a local bakery's uh, pepperoni roll. My husband got some really yummy sandwich style, you know, the big round, thinner cut pepperoni. It's nitrate free and all that good stuff. And I have mozzarella cheese. Hey girls. Yeah, they love their basil heads. And I wanna see if I can make something similar at home. So I'm gonna grab some of this purple basil and go around to my other permaculture areas to get other herbs to chop up and put in that bread. Get a little rosemary here. It's 
some English thyme from over here. Regan out here is getting some seed heads. I'm gonna pop off while I'm here. Tossed the chickens for the same reason that I cut them off of the basil. And take some of this inside for the pepperoni roll. I am sweating profusely. <laughs> it is a really nice, not humid day, but it's still in the mid 90s. That hot sun is still really hot. When I'm sitting out here in the intensity of it, getting some stuff done in the garden. I am starting this with active dry yeast because I am working on my first ever sourdough starter and I am excited to share with you all how it goes, but it's not ready yet. I like this to be just a little warmer in body temperature. What I always tell the kids is the warm water wakes the yeast up and the sugar feeds it. Mix it up a little. Trying to make sure everybody's getting to know each other in there. And then we're gonna set this aside and let it proof. Proofing just means that the yeast is woken up and it starts eating those sugars and I tell the kids it's burping. It's making those bubbles and getting ready for the flour and things to be added that it will help rise. In the meantime, I'm going to give these herbs that I picked for the bread a rinse and get them all chopped up, kind of into equal sized pieces. So nothing really stands out or has a bigger flavor punch than others and get it ready to go in the dough. My husband found this cute little herb zipper tool on clearance at the store the other day and he thought of me because he knows how much I use fresh herbs. I don't happen to think that that pulling those herbs off the stems is all that hard, but just to humor him, I'll give it a try. I don't think that works that way. Guess we will uh, try these ones. Nope. Nope. It's all just kind of bunching up in there. Sorry, honey. I love you, but I'm probably gonna put this in the back. Put this in the back of the drawer and never look at it again. Everything looks about the right size. In this, we're going to use four cups of unbleached organic bread flour. I prefer the King Arthur brand. Just seems to be a good quality product and works well for me. This pepperoni roll realistically could be a complete flop because I've never made it before. I'm just kind of guessing here. We'll see. Adding about two tablespoons of extra virgin organic olive oil and about two teaspoons of pink Himalayan sea salt. And then those herbs are chopped up. Pull out my trusty always a mess stand mixer and let it go. If you don't have a stand mixer, you can completely do this by hand right now. Just combine it, combine all those ingredients until they form a nice dough and then knead it for about seven minutes until it makes a nice smooth dough. You really do not need this stand mixer and up until a couple years ago, I did everything by hand. I like this to be a nice, moist, and stretchy dough. If you make it and find you like a firmer dough, add a little more flour or back off on the water a little. Another tablespoon of oil in there. And I just kind of roll it around. So the whole thing is nice and smooth and coated. And I'll cover it up and let it rise for 
depending on the day, 30 minutes to an hour. I just like for it to double in size. And now to deal with all that basil. Dehydrating your own herbs is a lot easier than you think. I made a whole video about it two summers ago because remember I did none this past summer. But it is super easy. And the herbs that you dry yourself, so much more flavor than anything you can get from the store. It really is a big money saver without much effort. And you really don't need anything fancy. I do have a dehydrator. This is a nine tray Excalibur, which my husband got me for my birthday this past year because he found it on an amazing sale. But for years, I used a $40 Nesco from Amazon. I used it for so many things and it was a real workhorse. So you don't need fancy to do this kind of stuff. And if you don't have a dehydrator at all, you can also just put it in your oven on the absolute lowest temperature. If you can get to 125, that's best. I am just putting this in here and anything I find that's like super obviously stuck together, I pull apart because sometimes I forget and put those seed heads in the basket instead of the chicken bucket. <laughs> but I just put everything here in the strainer of the salad rinser, and then I give it a good thorough rinse of Young Living brand Thieves Produce Cleaner. Now this is the produce cleaner that is already diluted that I keep in a spray bottle. It's just really easy for the kids to use to get out an apple, give it a spray, rub it all over, rinse it with water in the sink. And it comes in handy with my stuff. Now I know there are no chemicals on my stuff. We don't even use the USDA approved organic pesticides or herbicides. We do it all natural. So I know there are no chemicals on this, but there's dirt, there's bug poo, there's natural things. So I just give it a spritz all over before I rinse it with water and run it through the salad spinner. This is just a basic salad spinner from Target. Nothing fancy and definitely not expensive. Look at that. Another reason to rinse even your completely organic, completely natural produce. There was a worm in there and I had no idea. That's a pretty good sized worm too. There we go. We have seven of the nine trays are full. Put the lid on the front. Adjust the temperature where we want it. This is 105. I tend to do it about 115. I'm not sure why. That's just where I've always done it. And it's been about a half an hour, so I'm gonna pull this dough over here and check it out. Ah, oh, it's looking so nice. Not quite doubled in size, so we'll wait a little longer. One thing I am going to do now is prep the pepperoni and cut the cheese into slices or shreds. I haven't decided yet, but I'm going to get the cheese prepped and the pepperoni ready so that when that is ready, we just spread it out, lay the filling in, roll it up and let it proof. But I also don't want the cold cheese and cold meat to slow down the bake in the center so that it's not quite done when we cut into it. So I'm gonna let it come to room temperature. It's been about 15 more minutes, so about 45 minutes total. That looks perfect. So this is actually gonna make two pepperoni rolls. I didn't say at the beginning, did I? <laughs> I have a silicone mat here. I have another one waiting over there. And I'm just going to split the dough in half in my hands. It's about half. Yeah. Tell that one to wait. And then this one, I'm just going to spread it out. This silicone mat is the size of a cookie sheet and it just kind of makes a nice size guide. Spread it out. You can do this making pizza or you can do it, make a pepperoni roll, I guess, because that's what I'm doing today. All right nice and now we are going to put down our pepperoni gonna leave a nice lip at the end as well as along the edge here and just slightly overlap these we're only gonna make one complete twist I really don't want to do 
multiple rolls because I feel like I've done that before and the inside has not cooked very well. So I'm not gonna make this super thick, but this looks about perfect. There we go. I shredded some whole milk mozzarella cheese and I'm just gonna give it on top of the pepperoni. Nice layer, but not super thick because I don't want the moisture to cause steaming and bubbles and I don't want it to interfere with how the bread itself bakes. There we go. I shredded about a half a pound. So this is, you know, using a little more than a quarter of a pound in here. And then just gonna roll this up. And then just kind of fold over and pinch the ends so that you kind of stick the seams together so nothing's gonna break open and ooze. I mean, we didn't put sauce or anything in here, so it's not like that will happen. But flip it over so it's seam side down at the center and the ends are nice and even. And that was super easy. That did not require any specialty school. I mean, skill rather. <laughs> if this turns out, you, no matter who you are, as long as you have hands, this will work for you. I'm gonna put this on the cookie sheet to proof and make the next one. All right, it's been about 20 minutes. They both are looking nice and puffy. Now we're going to score the tops of them and that just allows the dough to expand better. But we have to be careful because we do have that filling underneath so we don't want to do it too deeply. A serrated edge knife is best when working with bread, whether it's cooked or dough. And just giving it very gentle scores where it can expand across the top. And now I'm gonna moisten the top of them just by getting my hands wet and giving them like a gentle pet. You don't do this with all breads. Some of them, if you want that glossy sheen, you can do a uh, an egg wash. But I really want the dough to stay moist, so I'm just giving them a gentle <laughs> moistening, I guess, and now into the oven. I have the oven preheated to 385 there. And I'm just gonna slide them in the center. And then have them bake for 20 minutes and then I'll come back and check on them. It is time. They look so good. Yes, you can see the scores split a little bit. I'm going to cover them with the same cloths that I covered them with for proofing to <laughs> Lock in a little bit of moisture <laughs> while they cool and just kind of let them set because right now they're pretty, pretty they're, firm. They're a little tense. Yeah, they're tense. So we'll cover them with a cloth and let them rest a bit before we cut into one. All right, it's been about a half an hour and I don't know if you can tell the difference, but the top is so nice and soft now and the kids are napping, which means hubby and I can taste it without the whole loaf disappearing instantly. Theoretically, you're supposed to wait until bread is completely cooled to cut into it. We don't really follow that rule around here. I've got my good bread knife again. Oh, it looks so good. There is a little bit of air bubble, which that was kind of the thing I wanted to avoid when I've made rolls like this in the past you get a bit of an air bubble around that, but we'll see how it turns out the rest of the loaf. A little air pocket, not too bad. Mm. 
how's the texture of the dough? Texture is good. It's got a nice chew. It's almost like a piece of pizza. <laughs> Mm. The cheese isn't too gooey. It's got a, a little firmness to it. Pepperoni's got good flavor. Bread has good flavor, good texture. I'd say it's good. How does it compare to Great Harvest Bakery's pepperoni roll? I know theirs is pretty extraordinary. I don't know what they do because their bread is very moist and chewy. Mm -hmm. Yours is good. I think your flavor overall is better. I think you have a better proportion. But I still think their bread is slightly, slightly a little better. Sorry, I don't claim to be a professional. I'm just a mom who likes to eat food. It's good. Mm -hmm. Definitely good. The basil is going. It's going to be going until tonight. I'll check it. And if it's not like really crispy, I will wait till tomorrow morning. I will show you all later what that looks like when it comes out. But I think that's gonna do it for us today. I will put the ingredients to all this in the info box below in case you wanna try to make that pepperoni roll for yourself. Thanks so much for hanging out with us in this snippet of our afternoon. If you like this video, as always, give us a thumbs up. Let me know if you try that recipe. I would love to hear about it in the comments below. And subscribe to hang out for more like this. Bye-bye, friends.